Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about education. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, well, it was basically based on a video that I made that was called Should I Fire or Train a Bad Developer? And the essence of that video is basically where I, I try to explain to the to like the employer in this case, I assume, or manager, that uh, it really comes down to what, where is the issue? Is the is the problem that they have pro issues understanding a specific tool or something that is specific to the stack, or is the problem that they simply cannot code at the level which is needed? If it is a problem with the specific tool, yes, train them and educate them. But if it's an issue with you know, like actual coding, like just the basic coding, no and fire them because usually it takes so long to train someone uh, it can take years so the question was is this issue depending on education the education they have been th through so is this a issue if you have lower education and not and you don't come from a university university or something like that no um, it, not always. There is an element to it which absolutely factors in, but on average, it's more about the amount of investment that you have made. So the thing that I like to tell people, which usually is on the uh, on the ball at the very least, is that the education background that you have, if you've gone to a university, if you're self-taught, that really only matters usually in the beginning. And the reason is very simple, because before you have work experience on your CV, you're going to get judged primarily on your education, personal projects, stuff like that. And of course, a lot of it is going to come down to your personality type and like your passion and hunger for the for IT and all that good stuff. Uh, so that's when it matters but when it comes to a mismatch in skill it's usually more about this very complicated thing where you have an employer who needs something now the problem with the employer is that the average IT employer does not know anything about software they have no idea what's actually needed and what's even worse is that they might actually hire managers who don't know either exactly uh, like there's you have to remember guys there are very uh, just as there are varying levels of, of skill in restaurant uh, like um, chefs or carpenters or anything like that uh, it's the same thing with software developers and software managers some software managers are so inept so completely incompetent that the only reason they have the job is because the pe person who hired them knows even less so when that happens they might actually hire a very ill-equipped software developer and this happens a lot my friends a lot a lot they will hire someone who barely knows anything and put them in the company because they don't know either what they actually you know if this person is good enough or so forth and they have no real way of evaluating it so you as the job taker you well if you're a junior software developer or even like in many cases there it's actually the case where you have more senior experiences who just don't know what real software development looks like uh, and they usually worked for niche companies as a consultant or something like that and in many cases it happens uh, that you hire people who are so niched on one specific thing that they basically have three or four weeks of education and any serious software developer like a real professional will be able to outdo them every single day of the week but they have that specific tool and as I said the managers who is doing the hiring doesn't know any better so they hire you based on that specific tool and then it actually doesn't turn out that all that well because the, you the manager then realizes that oh I don't just need someone who knows this thing I need someone who knows all this other stuff as well and they can't do it because they only know that one thing and that's usually the problem you have with bootcamp level developers they're they're so they're good at one specific thing or like they know the basics of one thing but there's actually usually in any serious IT company more than a few things that you need to know that's why I tell people that it's almost laughable to say that you can become a software developer in three months because the range of stuff that you have to know is enormous it is fucking enormous I've been at this thing now for I don't even know 
I can't even remember how many years now, and I have co-workers who've been at it for 12, 15, 20 years, and they don't know all the things that they need to know to be part of every possible combination of software teams that's possible to compose right. So when I say that the mismatch is not down to education and more about passion and drive, think of it this way. So if you want to be a successful artist, doesn't matter what you're doing, right? If you only go to a school and you learn how to paint or how to play an instrument or something like that, and the only amount of practice you put in or the only effort you put in to your future as an artist is in class, well, it's very unlikely that you are going to get very far because your education is like the, the, the school is just going to teach you the basics but for you to really shine as an artist you actually have to invest a lot more than that to make any real headway it's really going to come down to more your personal drive your passion and like how much time do you invest in your spare time and like you know the overall overall efforts it's but it, i mean that just doesn't just go for artists it goes for i mean if you're going to go into business it's the same thing if you want a successful company you can basically for you mean you, you will have to work really really hard to make a successful business usually and it's the same deal with us software developers this is not a cookie cutter profession where you basically just go to school and then the school system or like the education system is so well made that you know if you just pass your courses you're now going to be a software developer if you're really lucky I mean I'm not saying that it can't happen but what I usually see is that the people who have that type of streamlined path they're either usually very talented like they they are gifted which is a great thing if you're gifted uh, and then of course they also have the luxury of having a good work environment like a good ecosystem in their region where there are they are looking for people with their sort of profile and then they kind of just you know they do the elevator thing and go right into like a consultancy or something like that and it's great for those people but on average most software developers uh, they don't have that usually it takes a little bit of effort and you have to work for it and so forth uh, and as I said, you should really consider being a software developer to be more like being an artist than anything else. It's not, uh, you know, it's not something you just learn in school and then that's it. It's really down to pushing yourself and to, like continuously learning and evolving yourself. That's why I argue that it's pro it's usually a good thing if you have a bit of passion for this thing, at least in the beginning, because that passion is the thing that is going to keep you up when you have to sit and bash your head against your desk to solve those coding problems uh, late at night. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, it's usually not down to education background or things like that when there is an issue with a software developer's coding ability at a place of work. It usually comes down to a mismatch in expectations and requirements. So what usually happens is that you have a manager or some person who doesn't really know their own system. They don't really know what skill level they need from a software developer. And so they hire somebody who sort of seems to fit the bill based on almost almost always ignorance uh, the way that you usually would solve this problem in a sane world is that you hire experienced senior software developers who really know their stuff and actually do know how to do all the things within the company and have them do the hiring because then usually this problem goes away very quickly because they can usually spot the people who have enough knowledge on average now it's not you know it's always a mystery if somebody's going to be a perfect fit or not but on average they will be able to with a higher level of accuracy figure out if this person has the coding skills necessary on the other side of the spectrum you have usually inexperienced developers bootcamp level developers or people who have like a fraction of the skills that they need in order to take the job and since they don't know either exactly what's going to be required of them on the inside the mismatch happens and there's a lot of frustration and issues and so forth and it really doesn't have, have much to do with education it has to do with as I said personal passion and drive the best software developers are not the software developers who have the best like finest degrees usually it is the most passionate people who continuously keep on learning have a great day